It's on the paper, right? X squared plus one. Just put x squared plus one back there. X squared plus one in parentheses to the fiftieth power. Fifty-first power. Thank you. Fifty-first power over fifty-one plus, plus c. That's your interval. Does it actually work if you take a derivative? We, we probably do it in our head. It's kind of a simple one. You bring down the fifty-one, gone to the fiftieth power times the derivative inside because you're using a chain rule that gives you two x. That is the appropriate integral. That's it. Is it hard? Medium? Easy? Okay. It's gonna under, you have to understand it. You have to really understand it. Um, one note that, that you need on this, you're going to notice that all of your x's must be gone before you can integrate. Do you see that? You cannot integrate with both x's and u's. It can't happen. So all your x's must disappear before you integrate. Is that why the coefficients don't matter of the x? Yes. Coefficients you can pull out in front of your integral, right? You're going to see that on some of the later examples. This is a very, very basic example. Um, but I wanted to get this so you, you kind of understood it. So all of your x's must disappear. And the only way you can do that is through the du over your x's that you removed. No. Oh, is there other method? Yeah. I don't know how to spell limited either. There's two L's or one L? Two L's. Two L's. One L. One L. Thoughts of you and L's. I don't like L's. Hence my name. Did you write your name with two L's? I just say it. Entered. Not letter. Forget the L. Mr. Entered. Way better. Way better. It's tricky L's. You know, sometimes this U substitution stuff is pretty obvious until you get to trig, and then it becomes a little bit more cumbersome. But stick with the idea that your derivative has to appear somewhere, that you have to cross stuff out, you have to get rid of things, and then it helps you a lot. So in this one, hopefully, we can kind of pick out the U already. Can you pick out the U already? Yeah. When all else fails, if you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know, just pick the inside. Pick the inside, the whole, the, just the inside, not the exponent, the inside, and try it. What's it hurt you to try? You just take a derivative and see if you're right. I mean, it takes 10, 15 seconds, maybe, tops. And that's better than doing nothing. So here, I'm definitely not going to pick that. That really doesn't make it better. I want to pick this to make the inside go away, right? If I pick the inside, it goes away. I have u to the fifth, that's a piece of cake. Also, do you notice that the derivative of this is in your integral? What's the derivative of this? 2x. No, the derivative is not 2x. x. The derivative of this is what? 3x squared. 3x squared. Ignore the 3 and say it again. x squared. Right there. You don't care about the, the 3, but the x squared has to be there. So u equals x cubed minus 4. du equals 3x squared dx. I want you to solve for dx. Solve for dx. How do you solve for dx here? Divide by what? Okay, so do that. Give me a little head nod. Look up at the board here. Give me a head nod if you're okay on getting down to that far. Are you? Yes? Yes? Okay, cool. Now it's time to do your substitution. As soon as you choose your u and you do the derivative thing and you solve for dx, you can substitute and see what you have. Is, look up here. Is x squared still here? Yes, I didn't substitute in for that. Is this still here? What is this? U. To the? Good, that fifth is still there. You never take that power. Oh my gosh, that'd be ridiculous, right? Because look, your derivative is right here. It'd have to show up in your integral in order for you to simplify it. And then instead of dx, I'm going to write Do you see anything that simplifies here? Yes. What simplifies? What about the 3? Is the 3 on a numerator or a denominator? So here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to say, well, that is a 3. It's basically 1 third, right? 
What can you do with constants? That's why constants don't matter. That's why you disregard the constants, because they really don't affect you in terms of x or u, right? It's just a number being multiplied. So this is one third. I know you can take the integral of that. That's u to the sixth over six plus c. We'll do one more step. We're, we're going to multiply those fractions together. We're also going to ins insert back in what our u is equal to. That's x to the third minus four. So our, our final answer should be x to the third minus four all to the sixth power over 18 plus c. Are we red light, yellow light, green light? Are we green light on this stuff? Yes. Are we good to go? You sure? Are you okay on seeing where your use coming from? It's probably the most important part of seeing that. After that, everything really falls into place as long as you follow these steps I've outlined for you. You take your derivative, you solve for dx. That's not hard, that's algebra. You plug it in, you cross some stuff out, pull out any constants, and then you'll have a very simple integral. It has to be simple. It has to fit in your table. If it doesn't, you've either made a mistake or you can't do it. And that's the, the whole thing. Or you have to make a, a double substitution, which does happen uh, occasionally. We might get to one. Let's keep rolling. There's some good stuff going on so far. How about this? Now, if I gave you that integral at the beginning of integrals, like last section, you'd be stuck, right? There's no way you're going about doing that because that does not fit in your integration table. That's sine of x to the fourth. That's times 2x cubed. You can't separate integrals by multiplication. You can't take the integral of this, the integral of this, and the integral of that and think you're going to be right. It's not going to happen. The only thing we have left to us is substitution. That's all you get in this class. You get either it somehow fits, you have to make it fit, or you get substitution. That's it. There's no other method that we have in 4A, in first semester calculus. There's only two options you got. So let's try to pick something for our U. Why don't you write down what you think is U. Don't say it out loud. Why don't you write down what you think would be a good U. Remember the two criteria. It's usually inside of something. Not the whole thing, but inside of something. And the derivative must be there. Got to be there. So question. Should I pick sine? No. What's the derivative of sine? <coughs> Do you see a cosine? <coughs> then there's, then sine's not the right choice. How about 2x to the third? Is it inside of something? Not a good choice. Also, the derivative is an x squared. Do I see an x squared anywhere up there? No. That's my good choice. Just x to the fourth. Did you pick x to the fourth? Mm -hmm. Okay. So put it off to the side. You have to show your work. Be, organ be organized. Trust me, be organized with this. Because doing um, integration by parts later in your next semester, you're going to have to be very organized with it. Otherwise, you're going you're to lose stuff. Because it's uh, integration by parts, sometimes you integrate by parts, which is they'll teach you that then. Then you have to use substitution on both of them. It's, it gets crazy if you're not organized. OK, we have x to the fourth. You all tell me, what's the next step that we do? OK, do it. Hopefully you still remember how to take derivatives, right? That's why we have to cover derivatives before integrals for this stuff. Uh, okay, what's your next step after you do your derivative? Don't forget the cube. That's going to be du over 4x cubed equals dx. Still okay so far? Now you substitute for whatever you've picked. The only things you substitute for are your u and your dx. Everything else stays there until you cross it out. So let me ask you this question. Uh, does the 2x cubed stay there? Mm -hmm. Yep. Does the sine stay there? Yes. <coughs> does the x to the fourth stay there? Yeah. What does that become? Mm -hmm. That's your u. Very good. Does your dx stay there? How much is your dx equal to? Mm -hmm. 
Show of hands, tell me if you feel okay with this example. So trig function, yes. Hard, not really. Pick a U, it becomes easier. Why does it become easier? What happens now? The X cubes are gonzo, right? They're, they're done, that's great. That has to happen, right? You have to get rid of your x's because now you're in terms of u. You got to be in terms of u. And then you can pull your four outside. Pull your four outside along with what other node? Two, 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 two. Two. The two over four. That's going to give you <coughs> one half. Do you see the one half that I'm talking about? So this is two over four. I can show you both steps if you want. Two over four. Sine u du. That's one half sine u du. Now don't say it out loud because you need to practice, trust me. I want you on your paper to put down the integral of sine u. Don't say it out loud. Try it on your own. I know you're all going to give me cosine, but what I'm looking for is whether it's positive cosine or negative cosine. Hopefully you put negative cosine. Did you put negative cosine? Good for you. If you put positive cosine, check it again. You need to be able to take a derivative of it and it gives you sine. So this is negative cosine u plus c. Are you okay with this so far? What's the last thing that we do? Translate back to there. Yeah. Maybe make it prettier, that negative. I don't like that in there. I want to make this negative one half cosine u, but u is x to the fourth. So I'm going to make this negative one half cosine x to the fourth plus c. That's how it should look at the end of your problem. Or if you wanted to put this over two, you could do that. What you can't do is this. Please look at the board. Please notice that one half does never ever goes inside an angle. This is never x to the fourth over two. You can't do that. You can't break that angle relationship. This is not multiplication. It's cosine of something, of some angle. So you can't do any operations inside of that. You can't pull anything out unless you use angle formulas or something like, like that. Uh, we'll start one more. I want to show you something here real quick. We have about, what, 30, 45 seconds left. Now, this one looks pretty darn nasty, yeah? yeah? But let's really think about what's going on here. This is going to help you on some of your homeworks, all right? This is going to really help you, actually. What's the bracket mean? Well, what's it mean? Everything's together. Take the integral of that, right? Of, what, of all the stuff inside. Now, tell me something you do with integrals as far as it relates to this problem. Say, say it loud. You can separate them by the addition sign. Or subtraction, right? The only thing you can't touch is multiplication or division. So I could actually separate these two things, get 1 over x squared plus uh, dx plus secant squared pi x dx. That makes it a whole lot easier. Why does it make it a whole lot easier? Well, well look, that's basic. That's in your table. Make it x to the negative 2, do the problem. This, that's integration by substitution, sure. You substitute your u equals pi x, do the same thing. So that's actually a little bit easier. Does that make sense to you? So when you have the addition subtraction, break it up. Before you start doing a substitution, break it up. Sometimes it'll, if you tried substitution here, it's not going to work because you have this relationship. That, that'd be a bad thing. You wouldn't want to do it there. So break it up by addition subtraction, then do your substitution on individual parts.